morning tonight. Um, I, I always say this, but I'll say it again. Gorgeous, gorgeous day, and I'm really surprised to see anyone who wants to come inside. I know this is going to be an exciting, exciting speaker, but still, it's so pretty outside. It's hard to, it's hard to come indoors at all. Um, this is our final lecture for this particular exhibit, as Adi Um and I, I, it bears noting that we've had more than 25 events this spring. I think John, my colleague who's taking the night off, and I have reached maximum capacity. <laughs> but um, with our many different events, I wanted to mention there are two more after this evening. Um, one is a, um, what we're calling Most Gossamer Food. It's a breakfast in the trustees room of the TLCC, which is our campus center, um, at 10.30 on Saturday. So we'll be discussing Einstein inspired by the Einstein exhibit. And the other is actually tomorrow evening, or not tomorrow evening, a week from tonight, um, Judith Greenberg is going to be talking about um, watercolor and doing a demo. So we've got that happening. But tonight, um, we have someone who I met just by chance. <laughs> um, well, John and I were uh, visiting with Aleph Institute. Um, uh, and we were learning about Arab American history, and we mentioned the show, which is not Arab, it's Persian, but we were talking about our kind of cross-pollination and connections and talking about, I think I may have mentioned Coexist, the interfaith group that's here. Thank you for coming, Coexist students. Um, and, uh, and just talking about the part of our mission here at, at the museum is to, um, to have work that's either representational or figurative, um, uh, international or national, and spiritual or religious. And so that makes it us, we have a very special, uh, specific mission, which is unusual um, to, uh, to any other institution in, in, um, in the museum world in this region. So we, we are always looking to, to do things that are interfaith. Um, so Aziza and I happened to meet that day, just by chance, and started chatting. and. She is a graduate of Rutgers and has been with um, Aziza Magazine for 10 years as its um, chief operating officer. She's in the process, I believe now, of launching uh, the international edition of this magazine, which is the foremost magazine for Muslim women in the US. So um, it happens to be based in Atlanta, like so many amazing companies. And she's worked for Delta and also, I believe, for the CDC. So we're very, very grateful that you've come here and that you've rescheduled. No ice storms. <laughs> and thank you very much, Aziza, for being thank here. You. Thank, you. thank you. Well, good evening, any, everyone. And I concur with Elizabeth. It is so gorgeous outside. So I'm grateful that you all took your time to come and spend with us and uh, just allow me some an opportunity to kind of share what I do at Aziza Magazine. And, you know, as Elizabeth said, we are headquartered in Atlanta. I've been with the magazine actually for over 15 years, so I'm dating myself now. <laughs> and lived in Atlanta for uh, about 17 years, so I kind of quickly got started um, when, we, when my family moved from New Jersey. So um, it's an honor to be here, and I really, really appreciate the invitation. And I thank you for everyone for attending this evening. So uh, I would like to say that I'm, I'm pleased to be a part of the lecture series for the exhibit. Uh, and help me to pronounce it correctly. Is it Azadia and Azadiva Adala? Okay, well, we're just going to go on with your pronunciation. I'm sorry, I'm butchering it. Uh, stories retold by contemporary Iranian uh, women artists because it is very reflective of what I'm most passionate about, and that's creating and celebrating uh, women's freedom of expression. So, um, let me just share a few things about Aziza Magazine. Aziza Magazine is published by WOW Publishing, um, W-O-W, which actually stands for Women of Wonder uh, Publishing. And it is a <coughs> private corporation owned and operated by Muslim women. The founders of Aziza Magazine, as you see here, are editor-in-chief on the left, Taiba Taylor, um, who unfortunately uh, passed away of cancer in the fall of last year. And her business partner and creative director uh, Marlena Sarakasoma. They established the company in October of 1999, and the first issue of Aziza was launched in October of 2000. The name Aziza was chosen for its classical Arabic meaning of dearness and strength. 
which are two characteristics of the spiritually evolved woman. It was also chosen to reflect the universality of the Muslim woman's experience. Aziza is a common name in all Muslim communities throughout the world. Quite early on in the operation, our founders coined the slogan, Aziza is more than a magazine, it is a catalyst for empowerment. They made certain that this was more than a slogan because all of the articles in Aziza are written by Muslim women, and we use Muslim women as our field experts in the articles that we write about. We also employ Muslim women in all spheres and levels of operation. This is a vehicle for the voice of Muslim women. This is where women can express their perspectives. This is where they can have a conversation about themselves instead of others talking about them. When we look at the image of Muslim women in the mainstream media, we see only negative portrayals. We are shown as oppressed and backwards. We are often shown only as victims of war, victims of men, victims of religion, or we are shown as terrorists. These negative images are stereotypes and caricatures. They do not show our diversity of ethnic heritage, our diversity of religious perspective, or our diversity, our diversity of professions and education. Muslim women are shown as someone to pity or someone to fear. We are not shown as women to emulate and to admire. When we look at these negative images, we have several choices. We can do nothing. We can complain among ourselves. We can complain to the media. Or we can work with the mainstream media to correct these images. Or we can create our own media. This is what we've done at Aziza Magazine. We believe it is our responsibility to shape our own image. If we don't shape our own destiny, someone will do it for us. This is a positive image of a veiled woman. And this photo was chosen because a poem was submitted to us uh, by a young poet who's trying to you know, expand her uh, craft and we try to give new artists, up and coming artists, an opportunity uh, to share their work. So I just wanted to uh, read the poem for you, and then this is the photo that was selected to go with it. And the poem reads, Emancipation, a poem by Aisha Babur. She covers her body in a society where the implicit creed is reveal yourself, where legislatures have banned the veil deeming it a, a repressive cloth, where women are subjugated to fashion standards that reduce them to a pair of legs, a pretty face, a head of black curls, and they say she is impressed. In the season magazine, you will see Muslim women of all different ethnicities, schools of thought, different professions, and, and you will read about our issues and concerns. This is where you will see Muslim women who are remarkable in their accomplishments. This is where you can hear her voice without distortion of politics or bias. As you can see, the first slide is of Noor Tabori. She's a journalist who aspires to be the first hijabi on mainstream television. This is a picture of her on ABC7 News. Um, and I will share a video of uh, Noor's um, testimony to her experience in striving to be the first. Hijabi on TV. The center photo is Ibti Haj Muhammad. She's a fencer and a U.S. Olympian. And the last photo is Ella Katawi. She just graduated, I believe, two years ago from Clemson University, which is right up the street in South Carolina. And she is the first woman in the United States to receive her doctorate in automotive engineering. Since the magazine's inception, our readership has steadily grown to over 40,000 and includes subscriptions in universities, public libraries, and reading quarters in American embassies throughout the globe. For this reason, our founder and editor-in-chief, Taima Taylor, was named 
one of the 500 most influential Muslims in the world by a Jordanian think tank in 2009. She was also invited to the White House in 2011 to President Obama's annual iftar, or breaking of the fast, which occurs during the Muslim month or sacred month of fasting called Ramadan. The Aziza team received the 2009 New, Immediate, New America Media Award for Environmental Journalism for this issue that we um, published on the left. And it was, the whole issue was dedicated to um, living, sustainability, living sustainably and loving your planet Earth. And in 2010, 2012, and 2013, we received the folio um, in the upper right hand corner for this issue and several preceding issues um, in the, uh, the Folio Eddy Award in the Religion and Spirituality category. And for those of you who are not familiar with Folio, it is kind of like the Oscars of the magazine, so it's a very prestigious uh, award to receive. Aziza representatives have been featured on national news outlets such as CNN, NPR, and the New York Times, and local news outlets such as the AJC and Atlanta Interfaith Broadcasters. We were also featured in the U.S. State of Department release of the 2014 edition of the publication that they publish every year called American Muslims. The Aziza Magazine featured back cover for Volume 7, Issue 2, shown here, was chosen as the cover for the publication. Our mission is to represent the issues, accomplishments, and interests of Muslim women in North America. Aziza allows Muslim women to define her own agenda and communicate about pertinent matters for her perspective. Aziza is a magazine for Muslim women, for a Muslim woman who puts Islam at the center of her life. She is intelligent, savvy, active, spiritual, and empowered. She makes no apology for being a woman and no apology for being a Muslim. Our reach is across rich and ethically diverse populations, serving as a catalyst for their empowerment and success in different spheres of their lives. This is one of our slogans. Every magazine we publish um, on the back cover, we select a picture that was uh, submitted to us, and we um, are doing it alphabetically. So I picked this particular one because I love, she's a surfer, you know, I love the beach. And so for C, we picked uh, Courageous, Captivating, and Cool. And then our slogan is, is Easy Woman Catch the Spirit. Our vision is to be the vehicle for the voice of Muslim women and to be a household name synonymous with the best representation of Muslim women. So what is the feature of Aziza Magazine? When people think of Muslim women, they will think of women they, that they read about in Aziza Magazine. Aziza aspires to be a Fortune 500 company, creating a corporate environment reflective of high business and moral standards, providing employment and inspiration for thousands of people, and building a legacy of integrity, truth, beauty, and value. We also seek to establish a nonprofit foundation and to set up scholarships for women studying in the areas of journalism, communication, and publishing. This picture was um, a community service event. It was actually an initiative um, that I'm really passionate about um, because I believe in community service. And we coined it Aziza Cares. And so I thought it was appropriate for today since today is Earth Day. Um, but this was taken in, I think, 2011. And every year um, we work with uh, MedShare. I'm not sure who's familiar with MedShare or who's ever volunteered there, um, but we uh, that we create a logo um, and create a t-shirt and so uh, we invite anyone in the community it's not just Muslims um, it's anyone's welcome and then we uh, do you know volunteer there every every year and so that's one of the, the ways that we try to give back and we're looking to expand that you know into other areas so this is a picture of uh, our team and as you can see we're uh, just as diverse um, as the magazine is itself. We are also looking to expand Aziza on the international realm. Uh, Aziza International Edition 
uh, will be launching um, in 2016. Currently in every issue, we feature an article entitled Global Voices, which you can see on the right and the left. Global Voices is a platform that we use to highlight the unique experiences and accomplishments of amazing Muslim women around the world. And so the international edition will be extent, an extension of this concept uh, from a global perspective. And slide number 12 basically just shares our leadership profile um, and the subscription costs for, uh, for a Zizi magazine. Um, our average reader is about age 31, uh, usually college educated, uh, travels frequently, speaks more than one language, um, is married, and has an average income of about 37, excuse me, 57,000. So on the bottom left is pictures of um, is a picture of some women uh, that we met in Texas, and they're holding their copies of the magazine. And, and then on the upper right hand corner is uh, just a profile of two of the issues that we've had in the past and some of our demographics. So before I conclude, I wanted to share some examples of the type of women that we have featured in Aziza Magazine and share a few quotes with you from the women in their own words. Here, um, I've chosen this video. It's a profile of Noor Taburi. As, as I mentioned earlier, Noor was the lady that I shared in, in uh, the previous slide, who's an aspiring journalist. Um, Noor Taburi is a Libyan American Muslim woman who um, again, aspires to be the first covered Muslim woman on commercial television in the United States. Um, she shared in a Huffington Post article um, dated April 9th that she, uh, that her name, excuse me, means light, and her middle name, Al Huda, uh, means guiding light. In 2012, Nora launched a campaign called Let Nora Shine, which basically means let the guiding light shine, uh, to inspire herself and others to follow their dreams. So in this YouTube video, I'm about to share, sponsored by the OWN show, um, Taguri, Ms. Taguri shares her story about her ambition to become a journalist. Day after I made that prayer, 
And she said, Nora, you're a broadcaster on the major? And I said, yes. And she said, well, my name is Justine Love, and I'm the director of community and public affairs at CBS Radio, and I want you to intern for us. And literally, that internship changed my life. And I have to say that that was the start of when Let Noah Shine was starting and when things just started falling into place and it was opportunity after opportunity and it was just from that guidance, just from that prayer. So, um, and I think it means being passionate about stuff. Because you, you can be a geek in anything. You can be a Harry Potter geek. You can... <laughs> Another journalist uh, that I want to share with you um, is someone who's pretty much established herself uh, on uh, Al Jazeera. Uh, her name is Malika Bilal, and she is the co-host and digital producer of Al Jazeera English, The Stream. Um, it's an Emmy-nominated talk show host, uh, excuse me, talk show centered on the online community uh, participation. Malika was the cover model for a special report uh, that Aziza Magazine published entitled Change Makers, How They Inspire and Lead. Malika shares about her role in reshaping the media. And this is one of my favorite quotes. She says, the very act of being in these newsrooms makes a difference. It means someone else is no longer solely in charge of directing a narrative about a group of people they may not know. It means we are the ones actively helping to shape how these stories are told, instead of having those stories simply told about us. The next profile is G. Willow Wilson. Uh, she is an author. G. Willow Wilson is an award-winning uh, author of books, essays, and graphic novels. Her memoir, The Butterfly Moss, featured in the center, which relates her conversion to Islam and her life in Egypt, uh, was named Seattle Times Best Book in 2010. Her comic book series, uh, AIR, AIR, sponsored by DC Comics Vertigo, was nominated for an Eisen Award, the highest honor in American comic, in the American comic industry. Ms. Wilson, currently the writer for Marvel Comics, our uh, first Muslim character, uh, Miss Marvel, as you can see, she's on the far right. A newly created comic book series released in 2014 about a Muslim teenager. And Miss Wilson shares that the future looks brighter for Muslim women, authored literature than, ever, than it ever has been before. A new generation of writers finding their voice. Gone are the days when pundits and experts can talk about Muslim women without expecting those women to talk back. And our last slide, again, very appropriate for Earth Day, um, is Nana Furman. And Nana is an environmental activist. Uh, she is originally from Indonesia, and for five years, uh, between 2005 and 2009, she's worked for the World Wildlife Fund assisting the development and implementation of green reconstruction in areas affected by the tsunami. Shortly after she, uh, shortly after when she began to create the Sustainable Cities Initiative, she was selected to become a climate leader trained by Al Gore in 2009. Subsequently, Nana was invited to join LEAD, which stands for Leadership in Environment and Development the fellowship focusing in, green, in the green economy in 2010. Nana was asked to speak at the TEDx 2013 about green cities in Nantes, France. Current, she, currently, she is selected to join the Green Faith Fellowship together with diverse faith-based environmental leaders. Nana was featured in Aziza Magazine's summer 2000 issue. This is her on the cover. And she, because she was one of the Muslim women who was active in green revolution, in the green revolution, and she states, it is often too easy to make decisions with damaging consequences, and too difficult to choose more sustainable options. As representatives of God upon this earth, human beings have a we have a trust and a responsibility to protect the environment. 
So I thank you for joining me this evening. It's a very, very short presentation about the Z's Magazine and the type of women that we profile, and I welcome any questions. So thank you very much. <laughs> I'm going to ask something on behalf of Coexist. So sure. Coexist, stop me. <laughs> when I mentioned that you were coming to a few students, they wanted to know more and maybe see how they might get involved. Um, do you have, and, and I, I'm also thinking that we have this wonderful center for civic engagement here on campus. Mm -hmm. How often do you do some sort of uh, event like the, the Earth Day event where maybe students could, could get involved? Fair question. I'm sort of coexist. <laughs> well, so far, thus far, we we well, let me back up. We've had we started the initial initiative as Easy Cares about I want to say about three or four years ago. Um, and the two main events that we had was the MedShare volunteer um, uh, event and the um, we climbed Stone Mountain every year to kind of commemorate the 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 kind of the building of the company and how we've grown and so it's it's kind of more of a commemorative thing and those so far have been the only two community events i'm hoping to to change that and so we welcome any suggestions for events um that you know that we can get involved in when we publish um you know that we're going to have an event and it's usually local we we invite everyone who's you know uh, that follows us or is aware of you know what we do to be a part of it so it's, just, it's definitely something excuse me it's definitely a place where there's room for you know uh, collaborative opportunities uh, last year our Seattle team because we do have a Seattle office uh, they did a, uh, a renovation of a, a, a bus stand so they basically painted it over and you know made it look nice and you know, and had the kids involved, and so that was kind of an evolved event. This year, um, we're not doing anything in April, unfortunately, before, but for May, we're going to do the Med Chair event again, and then someone came up with an idea of create, taking um, flowers uh, that are par partially, not, not dead, but still <laughs> surviving, uh, taking those flowers and creating bouquets to, to take to the um, uh, the uh, the senior citizen homes and the, the different outpatient care homes um, to kind of provide some light and happiness, you know, for people there. So, th as you can see, there's a lot of room, you know, for opportunity. So we welcome, and you can you, you can get in touch with me. Yes, ma'am. Uh, how many subscriptions do you have, and are you self-sustaining with the subscriptions? Our, so Aziza Magazine is a quarterly uh, publication, so we publish four issues a year. Um, the, the annual subscription is about $30 per year, um, and then we charge an additional $5 for shipping. Um, that is not the only means. Uh, we are self-sustaining, but we do depend on our advertising dollars. We depend on our events where we can sell subscriptions. Um, so those are the t the main the two main sources of revenue, um, and then any kind of kind of speaking event or event that we host or sponsor uh, that generates uh, revenue for us as well. How many do you publish each quarter? Uh, one per quarter, so it's four for the entire How many, year. What's the total number uh, of our circulation? It's the circulation. It's forty thousand. Forty thousand. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yes. I, I feel so ignorant. Uh, it's hard for me to phrase this question, but I, I've always been aware that there were Muslim women who were outstanding. But frankly, when I think of Muslim women, before I get to check myself, I think of these repressed women that you spoke of. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, part of that is because I've just read or watched uh, American broadcasts mm -hmm. 
Um, does Al Jazeera have a television outlet in the United States? They do. They actually launched a, um, a network called Al Jazeera America. Mm -hmm. um, it comes, you can request it through certain cable um, affiliates. And, and they are headquartered in New York, and I think in, I think DC, Washington D.C. So they have several branches. Um, so there's Al Jazeera, that's the original one out of um, Qatar mm -hmm. in the in the Middle East, and then they have um, in the English one, and then they have the American one, and then there's an online one, and then there's a British one, I think. So there's several streams, and yeah, yes. Do you? Do you feel that Al Jazeera in the United States represents well the Muslim women around the world? That's a good question. Um, I really would have to look at the program more often. Um, I'm, I'm not a I'm not a big television person. Mm -hmm. I mean, I watch television, and I don't really. I don't really, I watch the news, but I'm really selective about it, <laughs> for <Yes>. obvious reasons. <laughs> uh, so I do a lot of reading, um, uh, and now, you know, you know, we live in a generation where we get snippets of news, and, you know, it's not really the full story. Right. Um, so I would say that I, I will, I'm not quite sure, that, you know, if they do. Um, I know that they are bringing the news from more of an American lens than other than what you see, obviously in their Al Jazeera, the one that's you know, um, you know, issued from the Middle East. But again, there's still a lot of work to be done for what type of news co coverage you know um, gets represented. And I find that you have a lot more um, open-mindedness in certain um, news platforms, you know, such as NPR and maybe a few of the very right. small or local um, media outlets, and a lot of those you can find on Twitter. So I, I, I actually have become more of a Twitter fan <laughs> because you have so, that's where you can kind of see like this underground, uh, you know, communication and different, you know, media outlets that, you know, you can kind of get different perspectives. Good. You're welcome. Thank you for the question. Yes, ma'am. That was going to be my question is what social media outlets um, is a legal on Twitter? So or is that just you personally? No, we actually do have a Twitter account. Um, our, uh, we also are on um, Instagram, you know, which is more for like kind of the, the fashion side of things. And it, it's, you know, more about detailing events and things like that. But for Earth Month and different months where there's a theme, we try to share some information. Um, we are, obviously we're on Facebook, mm -hmm. and um, I believe that's it. Any other questions? Yes. Um, so are there other um, magazines that are either specifically for Muslim women or um, Muslim life in general mm -hmm. in the U.S.? I wouldn't mean, be aware of them, but given the fact that you've got 40,000 subscribers and you're launching overseas, I figure you're feeling a niche and probably is not a lot of competition. I'm just curious. That's a good question. Um, when we started, there wasn't. So back in the early 2000, um, they, they, we were still in this trend of print issues, I mean print <coughs> magazines. So it was a lifestyle magazine and we modeled ourselves after like, the, the different lifestyle magazines. I think the one I would say would be the closest sister um, would be Marie Claire. And, and following that theme of using a, a female, a feminine name for a magazine, um, and even in terms of the features that we have um, for every issue. Um, so so um, at that time, we didn't have very much print competition. Um, and, but as the years have progressed, um, and a lot of people are, are finding out that print is very, very difficult to maintain you know, as things change in the economy, and as you can see, even with the New York Times, you know, people don't really read the newspaper, the actual physical newspaper in, anymore. So there's- So you can get Aziz on your tablet or something as well? But we're working towards that. Okay. Um, we've maintained the print because we find that it's most impactful that way. 
and a lot of people prefer it. Um, but we are planning to launch a digital version for the next the next issue. But there are other there. We're the only print magazine and only ma and the only um, magazine that you can find online, but it's not necessarily uh, digital um, um, in the in North America. There are several other. Uh, magazines that are strictly online, majority of them are based out of the UK um, and overseas. Uh, any other questions? I know there's questions in there. <laughs> Feel free, ask me anything. What do your goals, let's say within the next five years or so, where do you want to be, where do you want to be, for personally Well, personally, um, well, let's start with the magazine, I'll start with the magazine, because <laughs> we could be here quite a long time. Um, our, our initial goal, um, as I mentioned to Elizabeth, is to uh, launch a digital version. I think we're, we're behind in that sense, and that's kind of a sore spot. Um, for me, and now we don't have an online version. So um, definitely uh, to incorporate um, an online version of the Disney Magazine. Um, we are already global, so we have a lot of subscribers um, overseas, mainly in the UK, in, middle, in the Middle East, and in um, the Far East, like Indonesia and Malaysia. Um, so we're looking to expand that. We've gotten requests to, to publish the magazine in different languages, just the same magazine, but in different languages. So that's something that we're, you know, kind of thinking about. Um, so that is a goal, um, and also to um, increase our readership, uh, you know, to the point where we can be on newsstands. So the the industry standard is that you have to have a circulation of 250,000 in order to have your magazine on a newsstand. So we're, we're kind of toggling, you know, whether or not we should try to pursue that goal or really just make it accessible to as many people as possible. Because um, it's really for us, it's not so much about the revenue, but it's just being able for people to access the information and, and, and every platform that, you know, they can. Um, uh, the other goal is um, the international edition. We want to create a magazine specifically covering issues that address, uh, you know, women who live in uh, other countries. So, majority of our articles are North American based, primarily United States. So, those are just a few goals, you know, that we'd like to achieve. Any other questions? So I have copies of um, Aziza Magazine outside for sale. Um, I would welcome you to review them and look through it. Uh, it'll really give you a full spectrum of what we do. And if you have any questions, again, here's my contact information. Feel free to email me and look me up on social media. And I thank you. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs>